Hi everyone and welcome back to Lift Off with Jeannie Weldon. I'm your host, Jeannie Weldon. After spending years as a business leader and chief marketing officer of companies whose mission is to forge new paths forward, I realized that creating solutions that improve the way we live is great, but it might not be enough. That's why I'm here. Because here on Liftoff, we're going to have some fun with a purpose. We promise to bring you resources that will guide you towards a better life, financial freedom, better mental wellness, a healthier lifestyle, and something that I like to call content filled with air, authentic, inspirational, and relatable conversations. You see, each guest on Liftoff is carefully selected to make sure that the information they share enables you to improve every part of your personal and professional life. Our first guest this episode personifies authentic, inspirational, and relatable Mr. Ed Begley Jr., Golden Globe, and seven-time Emmy nominee environmentalist joins us now. So grateful to have you on the show. Welcome to Liftoff, Ed. Thank you, Jeannie. It's great to be on with you. Now, Ed, we have a lot to talk about. Better Call Saul, hugely popular, nominated for Outstanding Ensemble in a Drama Series. Tell us a little bit about what it's been like to work on that show. Well, I've been a dear friend of Brian Cranston for years, and, and because of that friendship, I started watching his wonderful show, Breaking Bad. I, I didn't need a fr his wonderful friendship to do it. Everybody loved that show, and I was one of them. And I just had this incredible admiration, respect for Peter Gould and Vince Gilligan, who did that great show. Then I started watching Saul, and it was so great. I couldn't believe that lightning could strike twice, you know, with that kind of incredible success and that kind of great artistic excellence. And then I get this call about being in the show. So I was doing backflips to, to work with Peter and Vince on this was just a, a godsend. And I love Bob Odenkirk and I'm grateful beyond words to been welcomed into that family. I think it's amazing, but I also think that you're a pretty amazing man yourself, and definitely two for two with monumental TV shows these past few years. Tell us about how it's like to work on Young Sheldon. Another fine show. It's so funny and as important for me. It has a lot of heart, too. It's kind of a love letter to the people of Texas, I think. When I watch every episode, that's what I get out of it. And... Uh, and just damn funny. The kid is so great. Ian is so talented. I love it. I love it. I have a podcast called Lift Off Journeys, and I always ask people if where they are today, if part of their journey was because of something that their parents did when they were younger. So your father was an Oscar-winning film actor. Was your father the inspiration for you wanting to be an actor? 100%. I'm convinced that if my dad had been a plumber, I'd be fitting pipe now. I just wanted to do what he did. And uh, but th having said that, I had everything else wrong. That is to say, he made it look so easy. And he's my dad. He's just doing it. I went, well, I can do that. You know, get me a series. Get me on Wagon Train. Get me on Perry Mason. You know, I just wanted to be on a, a good show at the time. Uh, so I, I had this bad attitude and I didn't even know it. I had kind of a wake me when I'm famous attitude. I hadn't done any work as an actor to train. I just thought I was kind of charming and I should be given a part. Of course, I didn't get anything. I went in a few interviews and uh, thank God I didn't get a part. I never would have worked and gotten that second job. So I finally went and got some training and then I began to work and I began to learn and get better. I love it. You got to put in the work to get the success. And, and I think you have you've, to. you've really done that, not just with your acting career, but also with your environmental support. You've got a line of environmentally friendly cleaning and pet products, Begley's Earth Responsible Products. What was the inspiration for this line and how did you get started in the environmental movement? It started in 1970 with the first Earth Day. What really drew me in was the incredible smog, the horrible smog I lived with in LA. So after 20 years of that, somebody said, we're gonna do something called Earth Day. I went, sign me up, because I know we gotta clean up the air. I know we got to clean up the water. I'd see the Santa Barbara oil spill happen off the coast of California. So I started doing everything I could. I started, you know, recycling. I started composting. I, you know, I became a vegetarian 
and I started using non-toxic cleaning products. Back then, all I could afford was like baking soda and vinegar and water. You know, it was primitive, but it worked and it was non-toxic and I liked that. But then I went, there's got to be a better way. And people, a few health food stores started to carry some non-toxic products. But there wasn't a big selection. So I vowed one day I would try my hand at it. And I did. I got this wonderful partner, Mark Cunningham at Lab Clean. They have the best formulas. They're non-toxic. But most importantly, they clean as good as any Formula 409 or Windex. But without that ammonia, without those chlorinated hydrocarbons, whatever they have, those other cleaners, it's... You know, because you got your pets down the ground, crawling around on the floor, putting their paws in their mouth. Same thing with our kids. Our babies are on the floor. Our young ones crawling around, putting their fingers and toes in their mouth. You don't want to have any toxic chemical on that floor or anywhere in your kitchen. Get it out. There's a hazardous waste site under your sink. Get rid of it and get a non-toxic product from me or from any of the fine products. We're all in it together. And uh, but mine are fine products and you can just go begly cleaning at Amazon and you'll find it. And nowadays, there's many choices that you have before you that you can do on a very, very limited budget. Energy saving thermostat, energy saving light bulbs, ride a bike if weather and fitness permit, public transportation if, if it's available near you, home gardening, home composting, become a vegetarian. If you don't want to be, totally become a vegetarian try it one day a week meatless mondays or something and see how you feel you might like it a second and third day and those are seven simple things you can do that you'll save money at too yeah i love it those are all great examples and so simple there's no reason that every single person watching can't choose at least one if not all of them and and try that and make a difference in the world and thank you so much for being on the show it was a pleasure to have you on liftoff and let's all move forward and help the environment. Thank you, Jane. Next up, we move into the kitchen with help for the busy family. And who isn't busy these days? We've got top tips to get your whole family eating healthier. So stay with us.